Welcome to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews and this is our show about mixology, about making truly fine drinks and using fresh ingredients only. And alas, we're still visiting Brazil and we're still utilizing cachaça. And ironically, one of the gentlemen here at the station, his wife, as we're speaking, is apparently on her way to Brazil. So that's really nice. How appropriate, how perfect. And we're going beyond the conventional drinks that are usually made with cachaça, the popular ones in Brazil. This next particular drink is named after an Antonio Carlos Jobim song, Quiet Nights. And of course, there's a Portuguese name for that, but don't ask me to pronounce it. At any rate, this is a good drink. Again, it incorporates cachaça, which is the, you might say, national drink of Brazil or national distilled spirit, more accurately put, of Brazil. And the nice thing about it is it's distilled from sugarcane, as I mentioned before. Not molasses, but sugarcane. But it has really little in common with rum other than the sugarcane origin. The taste is entirely different. The character is different. The ingredients that you use with it are usually different from what typically you would use with rum. Things that work with rum don't work with cachaça and vice versa. So we're going to go ahead and make this next drink here. And rather than being a drink in a tall, you might say tropical cocktail glass, this one is shaken and is actually dispensed in a martini or all-purpose, you might say, cocktail type glass. You could use it for anything, really. Martinis, margaritas, you name it. So we're going to go ahead and make the quiet night. And I'm going to go ahead and start by putting some ice in the cocktail shaker here. And I know some of you will be very happy that I'm not bending over to retrieve my eyes because that apparently annoys some people. But I always like to, to lend that realism to the show because if you're doing a large party, you can bet that you're going to be doing lots of bending over, reaching for ice. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and add the cachaça first thing. And cachaça is a fairly potent spirit, but that's what I like about it. Doesn't lose any flavor, doesn't lose any potency. And this seems like a odd ingredient to combine with cachaça, but it really works. This is elderflower liqueur. And I'm going to add some of that to the drink. Not a lot, but just some. And elderflower liqueur has become very popular. It's generally blended with things that are not even remotely associated with cachaça, such as scotch and other rather heavy distilled spirits, sometimes dark rum. And another thing I'm going to add to this particular drink is going to be lemon. So rather than lime, like we did last time, we're doing lemon because lemon and elderflower really work well together. I'm going to try to get some of these seeds out of the lemon. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it in. And again, we want to make sure we get that infusion from the peel, so always hand squeeze the fruit. It may seem easier to use a juicer and you may think, oh, that's so much better, but you're not going to get any of the infusion of the peel unless you hand squeeze. And then, very oddly, but uniquely and, and delicious, we're going to add some peach. And they do go grow peaches in certain parts of uh, South America. As an example, in Chile, you can, you can get peaches, but these ones, I believe, are U.S. grown, or at least North American grown. So we're going to put a bit of peach in here. And we're going to muddle it a little bit, too. And always remember, again, that muddling doesn't mean pulverizing. It means that you hit it just enough 
to extract some of the goodness of the fruit into the liquor. And it's always better to muddle in the actual liquor itself. And as I mentioned before, and as Ed mentioned endlessly, you don't have to go out and buy a muddler from a barware store or a kitchen store. Just use a wooden spoon. And if you're really in a pinch, you can even use a metal spoon. There's so many things that you can do. Versatility and improvisation is all part of making cocktails. So at this particular point, I'm gonna add a little bit more ice, and then we're gonna shake this drink up. A quiet night, or quiet nights, I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake it. And then I'm going to add it to the cocktail glass, our all-purpose cocktail glass. And this glass is so handy to have because if you have this and that glass and maybe a, an old-fashioned glass, that's about all you need for cocktails. You know, it's nice to have margarita glasses and, you know, hurricane-style glasses and so on and so forth. But with these two types of glassware plus the old-fashioned glass, you have pretty much everything you need to make cocktails. So I'm going to go ahead and dispense it into the cocktail glass. And I'm going to add as a garnish a little bit of lemon and a little bit of peach just for appearance and for a bit of flavor more flavor getting into the drink and I might even attempt to squeeze or macerate the peach a little bit before I, I put it in the drink and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste test to make sure that this turned out as I had expected it to oh yes that is very very nice again the elderflower liqueur sets off the cachaca and vice versa just beautifully. You know, I have a friend who tried elderflower liqueur and his verdict on it was it tastes like shampoo. But I like it. When it's mixed in with certain base alcohols, it really enhances the flavor. It turns the cocktail into something entirely different. That's true with scotch and that is certainly true with cachaca. And we thank the people of Madeira when they started to arrive in, Port, in uh, Brazil because they brought a certain dialect that Brazilian Portuguese speak that U.S. Portuguese tend not to speak and they brought the sugar cane to Brazil so that we have this lovely versatile distilled spirit. And of course in Brazil they use cachaça in marinades, they use it in dessert recipes, you name it, but of course the cocktails it makes are really, really superb. And this is a nice one, Quiet Nights. So again, it's, it may be difficult to find cachaça. There's a few, you might say, upper level um, liquor merchants that have it, like Mission Wines has it, Red Carpet Liquor has it, Vendome, and of course, Bevmo has it also, and Total Wine and Spirits. So you're not lost. You know, if you go down to your typical grocery store, even a, a nice one like, say, Vaughn's Pavilions or Ralph's, not likely to find cachaca. But if you do a little bit of looking at your finer liquor merchants, you are likely to find it. And then you can start using it and experimenting with it and trying all the cocktails that we talked about. So far we've done five with just cachaca. So enjoy your drinks, enjoy the adventure of trying new drinks, using the fresh ingredients, refining your muddling techniques, and enjoying them in moderation. And we want to thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. And again, let's be careful with our consumption. Let's show respect for our community and for the people in our community by not drinking or driving when we're impaired. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm Ethel Andrews. Goodbye.